Hello, internet. Hello, Sam. And welcome back to After Campfire. I feel like I very frequently have cards in my videos, but these cards are special because they're not magic cards. They're not key forts. They're not light seekers. They're not Yu-Gi-Oh. They're not Pokemon. They're my own game. I am working on a game. And I don't know if I've mentioned this on my channel. I, I will show one. The double purple rings. Well, double purple shard. I can talk about this more later, but I'm talking about Henry's Diary of Hell to Adult. I have been like casually working on games on the side with Justin for like over a year. And I recently got inspired enough to like finish and have my first prototype ready. And last week we played it and it was so cool to finally have my little baby exist in the world. Also, my dishwasher is loud, so I hope you can't hear it in here because I'm gonna get to that stuff later. Uh, continuing Henry's Diary of Adulting. I realized there actually are interesting things to say this time um, because the last two Fridays I went in to work, to work. Um, and that was strange. Like, the first time was extra nice, we got a whole group lunch thing, and I got to meet a few of my coworkers I've never met in person before. Um, especially, like, this one person, Kenley, who's been, like, the person I worked with the most out of everyone. And it was cool to finally meet him in person. Um, and it was weird. And then last Friday, uh, only three of us came in, including Kenley, who is, I switched, our team split. So me and Kenley aren't technically on the same team anymore. So just me, one other person on my team, my manager, and then Kenley, who's on our other team, and then my old manager. So there are five of us, but only like one other engineer from my team. Like two of them are Indian. I mean like in, well, he's Indian. The other one that showed up is also Indian, but two of them are in India. So obviously they didn't show up, but there's like four other people on our team and none of them showed up. Uh, so cool. <laughs> Whatever, it was interesting. Uh, Commuting is pretty easy because public transportation, the bus goes straight down to work and straight back. I was almost, I was stressed out a little bit on my way back last, or like two days ago because I missed the bus. Like it was one of those like, no, literally got to my bus stop and immediately the bus left. And then another one came in like four minutes. So it was like, great. Yeah. So the work is going good. Uh, it's been some stressful stuff, but yeah, it's for the most part going good. I got a raise, woo! But how much of that was like this general life stuff and people needing raises because of inflation? Yeah. I don't remember if I got a, if I mentioned that like my review for last year thing was, you are awesome. So I think it was a bit of both. So cool. Questions. Sam asked me about D&D characters. And of course, I knew he was going to complain about my answer being kind of boring and really realistic and Henry-ish because I said, like, I want to be a healer because I haven't played a healer when I've been playing role-playing games in a while. I could talk about the D&D the characters I've played in the past for a long time. If you would like me to, more than happy to. If you would like me to actually answer the question and tell you what kind of D&D player I want and D&D character I want to make, I'm going to answer. Uh, so that's wh why I kind of asked, like what kind of flavor do you go for? Like, do you really try to like, do like a fantasy version of yourself or like role play other people? And like, obviously like you're kind of supposed to get into another role, but the character Sam described as who he would want to make is very much like him. And he's like, oh no, I'm totally a different character. It sounds like you're just role playing a fantasy version of yourself, Sam. So it sounds like you're a liar, maybe. I don't know. You can comment back to me. So. Sam's question to me, which is also funny because I kept, he told me what his question was originally going to be, so I kept thinking about that when making this episode. I'm like, oh wait, no, that's not his question. His question's hilarious and weird, and I don't know if I'm in the right mood to do a great job of this one. I feel like this one would have been fun to do some prep time for, but I don't care. In, in fact, it would make less sense if I had a prep time because the whole point of the question of explain your work history as poorly as possible was that he was put on the spot about explaining his writing history. So I'm curious to hear about his work history stuff because that's also a funny story for him. So, my work history. Oh man, 
You know, it's very funny that we're doing this when After Campfire started before, like, I had a real adult job. But I should talk about my, like, childhood jobs. Well, mostly the fact that I, I worked as a circus performer, you know, uh, prioritizing, like, unicycle, flying trapeze, and lighting children on fire, as you do. I was really good at it, especially the lighting children part. On, and part. Um, eventually, they made me in charge of it, but I don't know. I guess if you burn enough kids, you're, you're good to go. So after college, I had an engineering degree, as you do as a circus performer, and I was like, huh, now that I have a mechanical engineering degree, the only logical thing I should do is be a controls engineer, which is a different field. Perfect! So I did that, I moved up to Seattle, and I started working on robots, because I was like, I'm gonna work on planes or spaceships. So instead, I worked on robots that make planes, which was the only thing they let me do. JPL wouldn't hire me. I think it was because I told them too much about the fact that I lit children on fire as my previous job, but that's besides the point. So I worked at that job for a little while until I got really bored and then stopped doing anything, so they fired me. So I was like, wow, man, I don't like this. I should do software engineering because that's way more fun. So then I worked at Disney for a month. It was so cool, it was Disney. And for some reason they fired me after a month. I don't understand what I did wrong. I guess Disney just didn't like the fact that my work history included lighting children on fire. So I went back to that camp to light children on fire more to contemplate my thoughts and really try to put together what I should be doing in life. And that's when I ended up at Amazon uh, because I guess they really liked the, my outlook on like how I treat others and like how I like to light children on fire. I think that's about right. So now like I kind of, I guess, code a bit. Um, which, if you know anything about being a professional software developer, developer is pretty much just Googling your problems and then copying them into your code and being like, voila, I am a master of these algorithms. And that's, that's how you do it. So I've been doing that for like two years now. Um, and so far it's going pretty well, but I really do miss those circus days. Ta-da. <laughs> It's very funny because in my actual career, like talking to people about how I got into software development is actually a weird th thing to bring up, like you talking about writing because I didn't study it in undergrad. But for software development, it's very common for people to come into the field from other angles. And like the fact that I had a different kind of engineering degree, like showed like, oh yeah, he already like knows a lot of like mathy techy stuff. He just didn't know coding. And I took coding classes in college and at my first engineering job, I did a lot of coding on the side. And then for the Disney job, I got laid off because of the pandemic. But I think it's a surprisingly similar path. Like when I mentioned on Friday, one of my only teammates was there. We actually bonded about the fact that both of us studied mechanical engineering and decided software was where we wanted to be. And now we're here. So it was cool. It was nice to see that he had a very similar path and he like brought up some like, hey, like remember taking classes like this? And I'm like, oh my God. So such weird throwbacks, like talking about like fluid dynamics and stuff and heat transfer. And I'm like, <laughs> it was just funny. It was cool. I, I like that he has a similar background. Um, but that was Sam's question and my question, which means I get, or my question then Sam's question. So now I ask a new question. So, Dishwasher is on and stuff because I have gotten out of the habit of cooking again. So today, well, I haven't, I didn't, well, I did actually, I made salmon and other stuff today, but like I've been doing a lot of meal prep lately. So like I've been like portioning like different amounts of like fruits and vegetables and bags and preparing different meals. And I'm going to do a lot more of that tomorrow, but I find that if, just saying like, oh yeah, I'll cook every night is not gonna work. I need to do proper meal prep and be like, I will cook or I will make food for the next 10 days and be ready to go. So Sam, tell me about your experience with uh, meal prep. Do you do it? 
How do you do it? What do you like to do it with? Like, do you like to make one meal very often and you make like eight servings of it? I don't know. I do that sometimes. I don't know. Tell me about how you cook food for long term. Bye!